everybody. If you're new to the channel, I'm Dar Sizzle. This is Brian, aka Puddin, and we're a Florida fishing couple down here in beautiful sunny South Florida. <laughs> That's right, Dar Sizzle. And today we're doing one of Darcy's or Dar Sizzle's favorite things: how to catch and cook stone crabs. Let's pull them up. All right, so look at that trap. Working on it. Working on it. So guys, we uh, checked three traps so far. Four. Well, we checked three, and there was no crabs in them. And then we had a fourth one. Someone stole it. Yeah. So this is our fifth trap. Yes. And we've just been a, a little bit down on our luck lately, I've, at least in my mind. I've just been a little bit upset about the crabbing and just praying to God that, you know, the crabs walk in. But it's been a kind of crappy start to the season. But it's just like fishing. You never know. Got it. <laughs> oh, behind the engine. Good job. Yes, behind the engine. I'm seeing some bodies. No, no, no. Really? Yeah, I am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. No. I'm not kidding right now. Look at this. Whoa, oh my dude, Lord. look at all the crabs in there. Holy cow. Hold on, I gotta put this we down. We the mother load, we the mother load, finally. Oh, let's get it open. We gotta get it open, right away. Heck yeah, what I'm talking about. What? Whoa. What? Right now? That's incredible. We go from catching no crabs to catching crabs. Sick. Look how beautiful these guys are. One with no this claws. the size of that one. That's a nice, nice crab right there. Look, look what he's got in his mouth. What is he doing with that? <laughs> you are crazy. Oh, Just he's all wrapped line, up. Huh? He's wrapped up. Fishing line. Sorry, little dude. Or big dude. That is a nice crab right there, baby. He's all wrapped up. Nice. You need to get that off his leg. Oh, yeah, look nice. at that. Look at that claw right there, baby. Gorgeous. Nice. That's what we've been looking for all season. Yes. Nice, that's the biggest one of the year. Yeah, and there's a lot of nine, blah, 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 I can't even talk, I'm so excited. There's a lot of nice crabs in there. Oh, nice job, so let's see how many we have in there. How many we got? We got seven beauties. Woo, seven, seven. crabs. Do they have keeper claws though? I think like every one of them has a keeper claw. Yeah, I'm gonna get a quick uh, film for it for my stories. You guys better follow me on social media. Follow her on Instagram and Twitter and TikTok and Facebook. <laughs> but yeah, if you, guys are new, if you guys are new to our channel or stone crabbing, uh, we, you're allowed to keep both claws, okay? We only keep one because you guys yell at us. No, <laughs> well, maybe a little bit, <laughs> but seriously, uh, if you take two claws, which the regulations say you're allowed and have done the research, they can become scavengers. You know, fish don't have arms either. And then, uh, or you just take one, like we do, and a lot of people do, and they have one to grab food with. But they also say having one claw makes it more, pro a higher propensity for them to fight and so then they die faster. So I don't know, you know, whatever. Just don't, don't rag on anyone fishing legally. That's all I care about. Fish legally and don't, be, and don't bitch at anybody who's fishing legally. That's all. But we're just going to take one. Yep. Nice. This is the measurer. It's got a crab on one side and a lobster on the other. Measurer. Yep. Slowly but surely the gauge, the uh, minimum size of a claw has been going up steadily over the years. So the gauge is almost equal here from a lobster to a stone crab. Yeah, the crab's a smaller one. Yeah. So we're gonna let this guy go right away because he's got no claws whatsoever. And you see, he's still alive. He's doing okay. He's right. actually mo missing most of his legs. <laughs> he's still kind of doing all right though. Just goes know. to show you that they're okay. He did get in the, he did get in the thing. Yeah, no, he fought with these guys, I'm sure. He took his claws off Maybe. or took his legs off. Maybe. All right, let's get, a, which one do you want to break? I'm gonna go with this small one guy. All right, good. He's gonna have a keeper too. Ooh, feisty, right. feisty, feisty, chill, 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 chill. This one's chill. gonna have a claw that's kinda close, so we're gonna show you how to measure it. The other yeah, ones look how to measure. All the others are keepers. Oh, it's gonna be short. Yeah, you're gonna be short. Oh, no. Oh, no way. Oh, let's just double check. That's a keeper. You see how that's on the thing, and then that is... That's a keeper. Yeah. We, uh, we overcut our gauges, too, just to be on the safe side, and I'm fully confident that that's a keeper claw, so I'm gonna nice. take it. All right, show them how to break it off. Yeah, go Ready? ahead. All right. Yeah, see how we just, we, I just, they, they made it an eighth inch bigger this year, so I just cut it with my saw. Yeah, <laughs> and we cut it like two millimeters wider than it should be too, just in case. That's because I'm a professional carpenter. Just in case. Okay, <laughs> so what I do now th th these days, instead of just breaking the claw with my hands, I go right in that indentation. You really can see it clearly right there. So I just take the knife and insert the point right there. J just a little bit, see a clean break. That crab is gonna be completely fine, oh my gosh. I just had that claw in my finger for a second, <laughs> but he didn't close it on me, and that's, he's all set. Yeah, throw him Let back. him go. Bye, buddy. 
Nice job. Yummy. So that's a close to keeper claw. And you can see right there, we already broke one for uh, social media too. So follow me. But you can see that's like a large. Nice. And uh, so this is a great time to tell them about your jewelry that you sell. Yes. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Okay. Yeah, I'm actually wearing, uh, it's not a stone crab, but it's a blue crab pendant in honor of crabbing today. So we got blue crab pendants on the website and custom stone crab pendants made by me with the crabs that we catch. Yes, you have to take these crab claws after I eat them and make a necklace out of it. So they're super cool. Here's a picture of them. So uh, check those out for the holidays, guys. Really appreciate it. And of course, Dorsey has all that different silver necklaces for the holidays and everything else. All and, kinds of great stuff. And this is one of our brand new shirts also. We got brand new apparel. Only 150 shirts, right, Sizzle? Right. Well, anyway, just for breaking off the claws, I really, I always recommend just have one person break the claws off. Because if you screw that up, then water gets in their bodies and it doesn't grow back and they die. Yes. Okay, or, or both of those. Basically, you know. if you break their arm joint and you break yeah. it incorrectly and it, basically they bleed out is what yeah. happens to them. Does the water get in the body? Yeah, they bleed. Well, they bleed out because the, the joint is not there anymore and you broke the joint and so they yeah, bleed you out. Yeah, they hold their exoskeleton. Yeah, yeah they so, die. So they die, okay? So don't have, you know, don't have a, someone from Canada, brand new, you know, your tourist friend come over and start breaking the claws. You know, you're the captain of the boat or whoever does the crabs all the time. Yes. Just keep it consistent and, you know, that person doing it so they get very good at it so we save the crabs. And I just recommend now, especially after doing this five years, I really think the knife is like key to success to always ensuring you're going to save their life. The knife method is better as opposed to the just twist it off method. Unless, yeah. you know, if you're a commercial crab guy, maybe you do that every day, a hundred times a day or whatever. But, you know, we do a, a dozen a month or whatever during the season. So, you know, we're not even that fabulous at it. And you, you want to do the best you can not to kill a crab unnecessarily. Let's go check the rest. I'm really excited now. <laughs> All right. Whoa, almost just went in. <laughs> I had the camera on, you're allowed to fall in now. All right, I'm now excited. It's crazy how that goes because we literally like three or four traps ago, I was just like not excited anymore to catch, to check them because they were empty. No catfish, no nothing. And now that last trap was just golden. Here we go. Yeah, and our good friend I Jane. see bodies. I see bodies. Oh yeah, there's one. There is a couple crabs in here and a, and a baby, a baby mutton. Really? Mutton snapper, yeah. This one is pretty close to our other one, so it just goes to show you guys that like each trap is different. We got, oh, there's there's one up here, a purple one. Oh, nice. Three guys in there. He might have a keeper, but it's close. Let's get that mutton That's out there. That's a big mutton for a tra crab trap. Yeah, he got stuck in there, little guy. He's almost a keeper, like. Woo! Oh, oh, watch my feet. I didn't mean to do that. I'm sorry. He's almost 16, like. The old regulations, he's probably 13. 14. Yeah, that's great. Beautiful mutton. Yeah, get him in the water. Occasionally we find them in the traps. He'll be okay. Yeah, fine. That's a great to see in shore. That just shows you that the little fish, this is their little haven, and they go out, out shore, off shore. Yeah, those tongs Darcy's using, that's key to crabbing. Well, he's definitely got one. That's going to be real close. Really? Yeah. You see how it's chunky? Yeah, but the thing is short. Yep. No, it's good. That's a keeper. Measure twice, cut once, you know, they say, kids. There you go, he's good. He's good. All right. But it's a chunky claw for its size. Like, it's a smaller claw, but it just looks like it's this, Now, chunky. this is probably a regrow, right? Or no? Yeah, so you can tell that they're regrows. Because they have, like, a fingerprint, Darcy. Yeah. See. You. I don't know if you guys can see this, but there's a fingerprint on every crab, and that makes them unique. But they're right there, right where my thumb is, just above my thumb. There's a fingerprint there. All right. Can't see it from here. And, yeah, these are regrows. Basically, the lines are straight and not broken, but if they're broken, that means it's a regrow of the claw. Pretty nice. cool, right? All, right? all right, let's go ahead and take his claw and let him go. Yeah, good idea. Nice. And how, how long does it take for the claws to regrow? So, I believe, I could be inaccurate about this, but if they feed correctly and, you know, they feed themselves and they molt correctly, by this time next year, they'll have another keeper claw right. for us to Whoa. harvest. That thing was right by my toe, bro. No, you yeah, wasn't. I thought you threw him back. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, Dan, you know, I'm not really fishing today, so I'm like barefooting it. The bigger claws, claws, you can see it for sure. Yeah. All right, there's another one. That's number seven. Nice. Number seven. Nice. 13. And no, yeah, that, that brings up another part of the argument about one claw versus two claws taking is that if, if they have one claw, can they eat better? And so the other claw grows back faster? So that's the thing, too. Yeah. 
Because when they have two claws, they're technically predators, and when they have no claws, they become a scavenger. Right. Now, if they have one claw, can they eat more than as a scavenger? And He's a that... purple guy. Oh, yeah, so cute. One claw. He must have lost it in a fight. You'll let him go. Let him go. Got a wave coming. Yep. Big waves. Whoa, they're stacking up. Oh, what's going to... Oh, no. Yeah. This hasn't even a flat boat. Why I didn't want to go down there. Woohoo! Take it waves, take it waves. Over the side. Yep. Wow. Nothing. Nothing. One. Right. One. That's crazy. All these traps are in pretty close vicinity. It just goes to show you that even a 200 foot move, 500 foot move, makes all the difference in the world. Incoming! Perfect. So strong, Star Sizzle. Whoa. What? You were just telling me I wasn't strong. All right, so we decided to move a trap a little bit. We're going to move it a couple hundred yards and uh, just take it from there. But that's what we do every trip out here. I keep rubbing my glasses on a shirt. Um, we, keep, we take it from there and just keep moving them throughout the season and see what happens. Just like fishing. Yep. Moving spot to spot. spot. Let's see, Sizzle. Let's see what we got. Empty. Looks empty. Empty, empty. And there's a dead catfish. Just one, the stone crab just wanted to get me excited for one five second little thing, and that was it. Sounds like a lot like our uh, home life. Oh boy, <laughs> here we go. <laughs> I had to throw that in. I had to throw it in. This is Dar Sizzle in our natural habitat. <laughs> Dirty, messy Dar Sizzle. Dirty, messy Dar Sizzle. All I do is play with fish and, and dirt. Gar by dirt, you means gardening. Yeah. But GC cleans up good. What do you got, Sizzle? All right, final trap check. We definitely got one in there. Let's check it out. Ooh, he's in the corner. Getting banged up by catfish. <laughs> you don't look like a keeper. There might be one over there, too. There one over yes, there? you're right. There is one in that corner, too. That one's really close. Probably not, though. Catfish are not good bait, by the way, guys. We always throw them out. Yes. Tried it. All right, welcome, guys, to another episode of Cooking with Puddin'. This is the Darcy Does Most of the Work edition. <laughs> <laughs> Doing stone crabs, obviously. The first step with these crab claws is you want to clean them up, right, Dar Sizzle? That's right. So we like to clean our stone crab claws. I mean, I know other channels or other people don't really do that, but that's just my thing. I just don't really like the idea of once you crack these things, like dirt getting up inside your delicious stone crab meat. Just doesn't sound great to me. Because they live in the mud. Yeah, so we're kind of getting them separated here for cooking, but basically these are all been cleaned already. You can see that we've got some big, large ones over here, smaller keeper sized ones on the other plate, and that's how we're going to cook them. Basically the same exact deal with fish. You know, we cook fish that are equal thicknesses. Right, right. So you can see the dirt here. I like to use a bottle brush. Perfect to get up in the corners of these stone crab claws. And kind of just get the dirt right out. I like to use it over the running water. Whoop! <laughs> that thing just go? Blew somewhere. And we're gonna get that all off. All right, so that one is pretty much cleaned up. And then meanwhile, guys, over here I got some water boiling, and we already put in here the apple cider vinegar. What was it? What even is it? White distilled vinegar. White <laughs> distilled white vinegar. White distilled vinegar. This stuff. Yes. So you put this in the water. And that's so they don't stick. Yes. Brian also likes the flavor of it, so we throw a lot of extra in there. And what I mean by don't stick, I mean when you crack the claw open, and we're going to show you, I'm actually going to eat them tomorrow, I'm going to let them cool down, so I can eat them with the mustard that I like. Uh, you don't want the meat to stick to the shell. So a lot of the uh, techniques we're going to show you today, we are showing you right now, is so that doesn't happen, okay? Like, so one of the techniques is when we break the claws off, we put them in a bucket of uh, just water, which we've got right here. That's salt water. Yeah, that was salt water. That's another key. Important don't put thing. them in the ice. No. Don't put them in the cooler. No. You just put them in some salt water, like a bucket of warm salt water from the water you're in. Okay. And then you cook them as soon as you possibly can. Cook them as soon as you can, and you put it in that apple cider vinegar, whatever the heck it is. White. What is it again? White distilled vinegar. <laughs> White distilled vinegar, and again, that helps uh, keep the meat from sticking to the inside of the shell. Okay, okay. All right, now we're gonna put them in. Uh, and you do, how long do you do it? Three to five minutes? Three to five minutes, that's De correct. Depending how big they are. Yes. The big ones go longer and the small ones go shorter. Yeah, I think I'm going to cook these big ones for probably a total of seven minutes because Whoa. it's gonna take a while for that like boil to come back up. We got some really nice ones right Let's here. Let's get to it. Um, and then the small ones will be like five minutes. So here we go. You ready? Yeah. This one's really heavy. Look how beautiful that claw is. It is. 
And those are all originals. You can see it. Maybe you can film that right here. Can you see that ridge? There it is. See the lines are not broken? There it is. Cool. Each crab has their own distinct lines there. Then that's like their fingerprint, like humans, which is really cool. So uh, when it's not a broken line, that's his original claw. Did we talk about your claws necklaces? Yes, we, we did. did. All right. Darcy has a wonderful I'm website. Not wearing my stone crab necklace right with now. all her failing bracelets she hand makes, the necklaces she hand makes. Yes. What's your best selling necklace? The turtle, right? Turtle, sea turtles. Sea turtles. Sea turtles. Anchors, we got all, all kinds, kinds of, of new stuff on there this year, like awesome stuff. Let's get the pot ready for the uh, cooling process. And Darcy is preparing a bowl of ice water, and so that when you take the crabs out, you put them in the ice water so they stop cooking. Oh my god, it works. Why did you put it all the way up? We don't need it that high. I want to see it boil over. I don't want it to boil over and cover. How does that work? work? Someone explain to me <laughs> why that works. I just don't want it to do more cleaning messes. <laughs> I had to test the theory, the wood theory. I don't understand it. It's magic. It is literally magic. <laughs> that was wild. Literally worked. It literally worked. All right, now, you, now, they're, now they're done. The timer went off and that's it. You put them in there. All right, now Puddin's going to show you his patented method of how to eat. Crack open and eat a crab claw without making a huge mess. Okay, first thing to debate, guys, is whether you like butter or the mustard sauce. I usually like to have them, sometimes I like to have them warm, like yesterday after we cooked them. Maybe just a little butter or nothing. When they're warm out of the water, just nothing is fine. But next day, cool them down and get the little of the mustard sauce, which I got right here. All right. Now, to crack these shells, let's get a nice big one so you can see it. Here we go. You don't need all kinds of fancy things. We just use a paper towel, paper plate, and a butter, and like a... Table knife, all right? And typically, it's not gonna work right now, of course, because I'm doing it on camera, but you got two knuckles and the claw. Typically, you can just break this off and you don't gotta crack anything, it'll just come out. Now look at that, nice, all right? Then we can do a little dip. Oh my Lord, that's just <laughs> All right, oh my God. No fess, no mess on that one. You're gonna try and just hit it once. The more you hit it, the more little pieces you're gonna make, and the more little pieces you're gonna get in your teeth, and it's gonna be icky. All right? Where are you hitting? Show them. Uh, just maybe like right there, and then like right here, and then like right here. So three hits. Maybe three. That one thing is big. All right. So here we go. One, two, three. Okay. So we're not gonna have shells everywhere in the world. Now those great techniques we showed you, you saw with that first claw at least, or the first knuckle, that it wasn't sticking to the inside of the shell and see it's not here. See, I could probably get it more, but I'm gonna try, try and pull it apart some and not make all those crappy things. Well, I'm gonna have to hit this one again. I'm gonna hit this one again. That's a hard shell. Yeah, that older one, see how thick it is? Super thick. Look how thick it is, that's really thick. Now when they molt, of course, you know, maybe once or twice a year, and when they first molt, these will be thinner. And of course, with our original claw, they're gonna be thicker, and right? you've seen the thing, the ones that are a thinner shell, they're not as good. I, sometimes the thinner ones, like, they don't seem that good. I don't know. Maybe, you know, right after they change shells or molt or whatever. The thick ones are delicious. Thick, yeah. That seems to be better usually. Anyway, so you see, it's not sticking to the shell on the inside. It's just beautiful. We can take that off. We got a big nugget. Boom. In the face. All right. Now we got this one. Oh, this is working out just perfect. Take this off. And there's a cartilage. Right. And this has a cartilage in the middle. So you can just go can like a it. chicken wing, hmm? like around. that, and take it off. I can't believe how well this is working out, though, Sizzle. So here we go. And bite around it. Mmm. 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 <laughs> awesome. Real big fat mouthful. Darge, you're gonna make your necklace out of this. Matter of fact, if you want this one, this one's name is Tammy. Send us an email. You wanna buy Tammy, and we'll get you this on the website. All right, there you go. I'll put it right over here. Special order for you. First one gets it. That's it though, Sizzle. Follow, Follow your dreams, dreams and, and keep, keep on, on catching. catching. And if you got a minute, check out this next video. And don't forget to like, comment, share, all that stuff. Thanks. Subscribe. Subscribe.